This is Valdemar Januszczak, art critic, presenter, producer, and this is Perspective, part of the Little Dot Studios network. I'm Grayson Perry. I'm an artist, and back in January, I set out to make art about probably the most divisive issue of my lifetime, Brexit. So after the referendum, I thought it crystallised a divide in our nation that seemed to be mainly predicated on emotions. It was a very simple yes, no question. Do we want to stick with that lot on the other side of the channel? Then, five weeks ago, there was a dramatic twist in the tale. Along comes Theresa May, and she calls a snap election. Everyone is welcome here, no hate. Behind both the election and the referendum, I think a deeper shift is taking place. Well, I feel like it's quite scary times. England can stand on its own two feet. What this was was an explosion of fuck you. So I'm going to look beyond the news headlines and the sound bites to the sense of identity and the tribal loyalties that lie beneath. I was overjoyed. It felt like a bereavement. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Grayson. And I'm asking you, the great British public, to help me make art about what I find out. So I want to make two large vases. One that reflects the wishes, hopes, dreams, fears, images of the Remainers, and one that reflects the Leavers. Can art reveal a truth which the daily noise of politics obscures? and capture the identity of Brexit Britain's two tribes. These are pots to stand on the mantel shelf of Britain. You are responsible as much as I am for these. <laughs> is the slightly larger one. It's probably maybe as much as 4% larger. <laughs> January 2017. And for the first time, I'm using social media to crowdsource the imagery on my pots by asking Leave and Remain voters to send me pictures of themselves. Although I voted to remain and have supported Labour in the past, I'm going to try and park my personal views and make art that's true to the feelings of both sides. I started with the levers. I like this one, Hammer, Saw, in his little patch of England. Brexit baby. I'm bored with being told I'm racist. I bet you are. Wheelchair basketball player. Definitely the coolest one so far. I voted leave and can't stand how the country is at the moment. That idea of sort of rebellion against the status quo, that sort of idea that the Leave vote is a, is a kind of up yours to something, is this sort of feeling of, I'm against. As well as using social media, I'm out and about in Britain. And I started in Boston, Lincolnshire, the most anti-EU place in the country. 75% of voters here voted to leave. Hey, contacts is. Hello. 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 I'm Grayson. Grayson. Grayson Perry, I'm an artist. Oh, Grayson, Grayson Perry, Perry, yes. yes. Yeah, 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 you've heard of me. Yes. I was mean. oh, doing the Graham Norton show, I think. That's it, yeah, I was on the Graham Norton show. Do I sit next to you? You can. I like your coat. Oh, thank you. I spent an eye-opening night driving round randomly in a local minicab. Well, we went to the quiz and won. Oh, well done. And we got like uh, eight pints, I think. We had too many drinks, I do apologise. That's, that's all right. Why do you yeah. think I've come to Boston? High sleep vote. Yeah. I just think there's a high percentage of them, isn't there? That's the High percentage thing. of? Like, from a national lens. There is certain places that I wouldn't walk in town that we really? used to be, yeah. At least with British men, you know what they're saying and what they're after. <laughs> <laughs> 
Boston has changed its face over the last 10 to 15 years and you, be, you struggle with your identity for Boston from what it was when I was a young lad or even 20 years ago. They're not integrated. We're still together, we're fine, but we're not. Hello. Late night shopping. Have you had personal experience of the feelings that are swimming about here in Boston? Of course, from my point of view, because I'm Latvian. A lot of racism and a lot of uh, people thinking about us uh, immigrants coming over, taking their jobs, blah, blah, blah. So Do you get it to think, your face? Uh, sometimes. sometimes. Really? And what's that like? Um, not nice. In Lincolnshire, there's so many jobs that land. Eastern Europeans are prepared to land. do that English people are not. Why don't you think English people are prepared to do? Because it's too it's too much hard work. You get you get you work yourself on land and stuff like that. I it is on really land for two weeks and I couldn't do it. Really? No. It was too hard. Yeah. It was too hard. If people from Boston actually went out and got a job. Like it's easy to get a job. I've had three in a year. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not hard. If the look, we can do it. Half of these people that think that they've got no right to be in the country can't get off of their Xbox or put down the drugs and go out and get a job. Yeah. Why are you judging? Get off your ass and do it yourself. I read every day. I mean, I read Chris Hedges, I read Chomsky, I read, um, I read books on globalisation, who's that, Joseph Stiglitz. And still I feel completely overwhelmed and, and because not knowing. There is, because there is no wrong or right answer. There's no complete wrong or no, right answer. No, I mean... Well, I Very feel serious and stuff in this conversation. Wasn't expecting this tonight. <laughs> wow. Did you vote leave? I did vote leave, yes. Did yeah. you, Jackie? Yeah, I think you'll find. Yeah. yeah. In effect, it was more of a protest vote to get to rescue Boston. I'm, like, I would have voted to remain, but I thought my one vote's not going to make a difference, is it? Come but, on, no. <laughs> but, no. <laughs> if I would vote, yeah, if I would be able to vote, yes. I would vote leave as well. Really? Yes. So you think Britain would be better off, even though you've, yes. you've benefited greatly from the freedom of movement and yes. the free market? Of course, yeah. To be honest, we don't vote. No? Because what we don't know don't hurt us. So were you really happy when the result came out then? Yeah, and now we might, we might have think we made this one decision, I don't know. You don't know? We don't know. We, we, time will tell. Can we I have hope... a picture? Of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> they were a breath of fresh air, really. One of the things that I've noticed, I think, about the referendum, it's inflamed people's passions more than anything that I've seen in my lifetime. Because it is a complicated question about life, and these are subtle, emotional, philosophical, spiritual questions that can't be answered by some simple, bloody yes and no question. Next, I turned my attention to the Remainers. Their photographs gave me some early clues about how differently each side saw themselves. <laughs> If one was to be um, less charitable about the Remain photographs, they are showing off their cultural capital massively. Anxiety seems to be a theme. I like that one. <laughs> I think it's a purely kind of emotional response to the idea of peace and togetherness of a continent rather than any kind of economic concerns. To take the temperature of real-world Remainers, I'll be visiting Hackney in London, where 78% of voters wanted to remain. What are you drawing? Cat. Saturday morning, and Hackney families were gathering for a traditional ritual. Can someone remind me what we're protesting about today? Protesting about how we think that um, we should have stayed in the EU. They're quite small poos, aren't they? I think we need a bigger poo. You think people seeing these on the television will immediately go, gosh, we've made a mistake here. <laughs> <laughs> and they might think, God, look at those people, they can afford to waste three croissants. <laughs> <laughs> Hack 
and he was out in force today for a national protest march in central London against Brexit. As with many such events in Britain, it was also a way of proclaiming membership of a tribe. In many ways, going on a protest is a kind of fun leisure activity, you know. A nice sunny afternoon with a bit of craftivism before you leave, and then back in time to watch a nice Scandi box set. The country has been built with economic migrants, with people that have come to establish community here. That whole notion now feels so regressive to start thinking about separation when we've been so united. I do think it's ironic that a lot of these people in this march would have been, would have been protesting about globalisation not so long ago, yeah. you know, all the anti-globalisation. And here you are, standing alongside the forces of international finance. When the British were colonising all over the world, it was OK then to be global. I just think that... Um, I think the, a lot of people voted Leave because they believed a lot of lies. The tectonic plates of British identity were shifting. These were the left-leaning middle classes, by and large, but now they found themselves on the same side as global capital and city banks, the very forces they might once have defined themselves against. Remainers are more likely to be people of anywhere, that they've got a kind of identity and a confidence that feels they can go anywhere in the world or anywhere in the country. They see the future as more like uh, an adventure on which they are well equipped to embark. Whereas Leave voters are really linked to their community and their geography and that they are people of somewhere. They feel their identity is under threat because their locale is under threat, their way of life is under threat, they feel. The referendum question in many ways was well pitched to highlight this divide. But for all the tribal markers on display here, how deep did this division really go? I needed to go back to Boston and to Hackney to find out. February 2017, and I'm in Boston Lynx, an averagely prosperous market town in Middle England and the most anti-EU place in the UK. I'm using art to try and capture the identity of leavers and remainers alike. That's very nice. <clears throat> bon appetit, as they yeah. say. Yeah. I had dinner at the Boston and County Club with three prominent local leavers, Barry, Yvonne and Marianne. I was interested in the, you know, the slogan, Take Back Control, mm. was so potent. It was a you know, very clever slogan because it put his finger exactly on how people felt. But I wondered if it was anything to do with the EU. In a way, I just feel that England can stand on its own two feet. British Isles, is, we've got a lot to offer. We stood on our own two feet years ago when we had the Second World War, and I, and I feel that um, we will go forward in great numbers. How do you feel about Boston? The heritage and the history of Boston is, is wonderful. And I think that gives you a sense of pride of your heritage. This is the, we, we've not only adopted it from being here, but actually part of it in, in your spirit. Mm. And I think that's quite an important way in which people, and, and I, you know, I think that's how we see ourselves. And you feel that's under attack? There was a volume of them came all at once. They didn't just trickle in, they came all at once. Yeah. And I think that's what shocked the whole of the town and the area, was this influx of varying nationalities. And they felt that the town was being taken off them. Oh. Sorry? I think I'll have the Ferrero Rocher. Ferrero Rocher. 
Do you think that people have just projected things they don't like about the world onto the EU? Do you really think it's the EU that's fault for all these things? Because 48% of the people didn't think it was. I think 48% of people were so frightened that if it came out of the EU, not sure what, the, what was going to happen. So you think they, they were cowards? I think they're cowards. What if I was to say to you, maybe they were people who felt like they were in control already? Disagree. Disagree. You know, because... They weren't in control and they're not in control. But they might have felt like that. That's a false sense of security. Well, maybe that if they were, theirs was a false feeling, maybe the one of not being in control was a false feeling. You as a person and I as a person, most people are much more happy when they're running their own lives and controlling their own lives than somebody telling them what they can and can do with their lives. Yeah. If you ask people who's in control of your life, a lot of people say, I am. And I bet a lot of those people will be Remain voters. On a day-to-day -day basis, you are. But yeah. generally, in the world, as you talk about the world and the EU, they're not. Do you think maybe the Leave vote was a kind of cry of, stop the world, I want to get off? Uh, stop EU, I want to get off. <laughs> <laughs>was a nostalgic, intensely local sense of identity and a desire to protect the life they felt they used to have. Like most things in Brexit Britain, it was not without its ironies. There seems to be a paradox in the air that this vision of Britain that the Leave voters seem so very keen on, that we will stand on our own two feet once we're outside the EU, and we will be this independent, strong, brave nation on our own. This vision seems to be, you know, supported here, particularly here in this agricultural area, by vast fields of industrial farmland that are serviced and worked on by huge numbers of, of, of immigrants. That's what confirms for me, really, that this is not a rational conflict. For all the boost to national prestige the Leavers felt, it had taken a hit in Piotr's eyes. He was the only migrant worker I met who would talk to me on camera. How do you feel about the fact that you're living in the place which is one of the most Leave vote parts of Britain? The people are scared. Because every... who, what people are scared? Immigrants. Immigrant people, immigrant people, people are scared. scared. All my family is here. So it's big difficult, you know, the, the change everything now, go back. Yeah. No, it's, 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 it's not easy. I'm 10 years in here, so, you know, it's long, long time. So now, why the country same time me go out? Does it seem mad? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying nothing, but it's a little bit no fair. A little bit not fair. A little bit not yeah. fair. EU referendum, a little <laughs> bit not fair. <laughs>
Bit more guts. A lot of the people that I know that vote Remain would, would kind of think of themselves as liberals who think there are higher values than money. Mm. You know, and it would horrify them to think that they had voted on the side of money. Mm. It just just so happens that our house has kind of gone up in value by 20 times, you know. <laughs> and that somehow we would never vote to protect that, no. <laughs> Back in the studio, the results of my next totally unscientific social media experiment were coming in. And they confirmed how different the self-presentation of each side could sometimes be. I asked both sides, Leavers and Remainers, to send me pictures of their tattoos. And uh, one of the themes that's come out of the Leavers tattoos that I find quite interesting, for a side in the argument that seemed to be, you know, often voicing, thinking we have too many immigrants, they don't mind cultural appropriation when it comes to their tattoos. There's quite a lot of Buddhist symbol, there's Egyptian symbols there. There's a bit of Celtic. There's a kind of uh, Hawaiian alien. Scrolling through the Remainers tattoos, they're more imaginative because they obviously they're loaded with cultural capital. So their tattoos have a sort of layer of uh, visual irony about them and that they're co-opting some of the more traditional images in a kind of hipsterish way. But tattoos are revealing because they're about commitment and what 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 you want to stand for. To get more understanding of what Remainers stood for, I went to an event that seemed a world away from Boston. an early morning sober rave where hackney hipsters party before going to whatever jobs it is they do morning morning glory bill how you doing let's keep it moving give it grooving keep the energy high we won't be moving but the mad thing is you know we're here today playing african music we came from africa so to say no we you know, us white people, right, we're going to defend our tiny little island and our tiny little values. It felt like a bereavement. Are you ready, everybody? Keep it lively! We're lost. Grief, actually. I cried at your tears. Yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, I went absolutely. home and I cried, yeah. I Got was it. really, really upset. I felt like after the Olympics and it, it felt like I'm going to cry again. <laughs> it felt like everyone was so together and we celebrated being British and what that meant as togetherness and being part of something and it felt like that was sort of ripped apart yeah. and it made me cry. <laughs> yeah. Hearing how emotional these Remainers' reasons were, brought home to me the elementary blunder the Remain campaign had made. They cast themselves as the purely rational side of the argument. They marshalled facts, but failed to pitch their message to the heart. We're all as emotional as each other. We all have the same deck of feelings. It really showed up for me the abstraction and fuzziness of the motivations on both, you know, both sides, because if Leave voters have this kind of abstract of, we're going to stand alone, then the Remain voters seem to have this one of peace and unity. What the referendum represented in many ways was a kind of watershed on which the, the emotional sort of rain of Britain fell and it either went one way or another way. And it was in Hackney's leafy Stoke Newington that I got the first hint of what needed to happen now, in the way these remainers at Pregnancy Yoga were processing the result. So the sound's going down inside your baby and down your body into 
I feel it's really depressing because of the divide that you feel from it. And, um, and it's quite shocking. Just the conversations I've had with, with close family and friends is, um, has been really heated and really uncomfortable and it's hard to sort of move, move past it because fundamentally it, it makes you feel that you have very different values. And what do you do with that? Mm. I mean, how do you feel as Remain voters being characterised as this sort of privileged metropolitan elite? And curiously, something I've heard from the Leave voters as well is that they see the Remain voters as wanting to hold on to the status quo because that's, they've got the money already. I think it's fair enough. I think they're right. I mean, I think we should hold our hands up and say this thing that we didn't, this wall that we didn't see was there and we've... We, I feel I'm a person that has done well out of the system so far as it is, and there were people that weren't doing well and I didn't see it. And to me, that's a huge sadness and a huge shame that, that I didn't notice that. We can't think of ourselves as outsiders anymore. You know, we are the establishment. We have, these are establishment values we're talking about here now. You're sharing, you know, I'm sure David Cameron and George Osborne, if they were squatted around the floor, wouldn't be that far off our values in many ways. <laughs> Every bit as much as leavers, Remainers voted to protect their way of life. And when both sides sent me photos over social media of their favourite things about Britain, they spoke of something deeper than all the cultural differences I'd seen. I'm just looking through some of the photographs that Leave voters have sent me of what they love about Britain. The Queen, of course. The village pub. Quite a lot of the village pub. The modest countryside of Britain. I like the gentle vision that's there of, of ordinary, relatively banal places. I think there's an honesty about it. These ordinary things are what makes us happy, and I think these photographs are a real reflection of that. In many ways, though, the photographs that the Remain voters have sent me, oh, they've got a similar kind of tone to the ones, the Leave voters. You know, there's a kind of humour, there's a kind of all those lovely everyday things we all love, a good fry-up, a good drink, a nice walk in the country, our pets, the seaside. And I think that the... The noise of the Brexit argument often is a distraction from th the rest of our lives, which I think are much more similar. For all the different tribal markings they'd displayed for me, when it came to what they loved about our country, the two sides were very much the same. Our identity is so much more shared than it is divided. The feelings that made us vote either way were actually a small part of who we are. Started to get an idea about what they'll look like. In my heart of hearts, what I want when, when these vases are displayed is that people won't really be able to tell which one is leave and which one is remain. I'm not quite tempted not even to label them. This spirit of underlying unity that I hope my pots might capture was about to be put to the test. My Brexit pots would form the centrepiece of an exhibition. Oh, not so bad. It's in one piece. Scheduled to open in London, ironically as it turned out, on June the 8th. Well, I've just heard on the radio that Theresa May has called a snap election for June the 8th, um, which really throws the whole kind of Brexit issue even more into the spotlight. I mean, in many ways, it'll be interesting to see how the kind of arguments that we've heard around Leave and Remain sort of play out in the party political fight that is to come. For the next six weeks, I still had to apply successive layers of transfers to the works. 
They're all images both leavers and remainers have sent to me of their favourite things about Britain, their tattoos, ch -ch 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 changes, and the public figures who best represent their side. But what might happen to the two tribes now the election had been called? Unfashionably, perhaps, I asked an expert, pollster Ben Page. What are the main issues in this election and how does Brexit fit into that mix? Well, Brexit is one of the most important issues for voters, but it's alongside things like the National Health Service, immigration, education and the economy. So it's, it has been consistently one of the top two issues, but it's certainly not the only thing that people will be thinking about when they decide how to vote. Even the party's attitude about Brexit isn't just a kind of clean, hard Brexit or hard remain. No, Labour is saying, you know, we accept the will of the people, Brexit's going to happen, but we want a good deal. Conservatives, clearly, we're leaving, uh, and uh, no deal is better than a bad deal. UKIP, uh, currently polling very, very badly compared to their showing previously, they've become effectively redundant. The Lib Dems are the one uh, of the larger parties that has clearly said it wants to stay inside the European Union and so it wants a second referendum on the deal or on staying or going. In Scotland, of course, the SNP are pro-Europe. And finally, of course, we have the Greens who are pro-immigration and pro-Europe. But what has happened to those two tribes, the sort of Leave tribe and the Remain tribe, you know, a year on? There's still perhaps 20% of people who really would like another referendum and, and have a vote and would like to, us to go back in or stay inside the European Union. And there's a, perhaps a larger proportion, maybe 30%, who are absolutely set on Brexit, even if it means damaging the economy, even if it means diminishing our status in the world, or they, perhaps they don't think that. Whatever the consequences, we've just got to go. We should go now. We shouldn't even pay any money to Brussels. We should just get out, close the borders, have done. Mm. But for everybody else, at least half the population, it's much more nuanced and it's much more pragmatic. Brexit is hovering very much in the background of all the conversations that are going on. The traditional political parties are very aware that their demographics, their voters, don't totally overlap with the two sides of the Brexit debate. It's going to be quite interesting to see what kind of manoeuvring the traditional political parties do to appease the emotional rift, if you like. I asked a prominent figure from each side to tell me where they thought their own tribe stood now. Aaron Banks is the multi-millionaire businessman who bankrolled the Leave EU campaign to the tune of more than £6 million. Why do you, do you think Leave won? The reason Leave won in the end was because we got three million voters that never voted in their lives to come out and vote once because it mattered. People's feeling that government didn't really care about places like Boston or, or Hull or wherever, and actually all the wealth was concentrated. So yes, we had a successful economy, but it wasn't spread across the country you know, equitably. Yeah. So do you think the kind of yummy mummies of sort of North London were worried about that it might have to have a moany English cleaner? Probably. <laughs> but I don't frankly give a toss about <laughs> yummy... Well, other than obviously appreciating the yummy mummy as much as the next bloke, I don't really uh, care about those people. It's easy to s dismiss the Ramonas, but they have genuine feelings too. And I've interviewed these people and... You know, many of them talk of tears shed, deep feelings of anxiety and unease. There are winners and losers, aren't they? But make no mistake, I don't give a monkeys about them. They've got a good life. Sometimes it's good just to upend the whole bloody lot, you know, and just see how it all falls. Well, that does seem to be a little <laughs> bit... That did, I mean, that did, for me, seem like what you were doing. It was yeah. sort of like, oh, sod the consequences. But, you know, occasionally upending things is not a bad thing. You know, the French Revolution was not great, but it, 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 it created a lot of energy, it created a lot of all sorts of different dynamics. Well, I've certainly Sometimes felt Sometimes you have to it. change. You can't just stay static. You know, you have to change. Do you think it's really a culture war, is that? It's a massive culture war. And if you put your finger on anything, that's precisely what it is. What this was was an explosion of fuck you. Well, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I can totally believe that. But you seem slightly sad about it, or in some ways. So what, what, what is your sadness about the thing? That it wasn't noticed. 
I see what you mean. All the power of, you know, government researchers and political commentators and media journalists and, and people like me, in a way, you know, commentators on society, hadn't taken... You know, I, you know, when it all happened, I thought, hey, I can kind of see where that's coming from. It's been building up for 40 years. Yeah, that's what I think. <laughs> I think I agree it's with like you. It's like a volcano, isn't it? Yeah. You, the, the, the volcano looks stable, it looks contained right up to the point it bloody blows. When it blows, does it blow, you know? So I think in many, many ways, it's total victory. But how does that feel? It feels bloody great. Remain campaigner Gina Miller took the government to court over Brexit and came third in my straw poll of the Remainers' favourite people. Now she's fronting a new campaign to encourage tactical voting to prevent a hard Brexit. We've seen this crystallisation of a long coming divide in our society that the referendum has thrown up. And then we have the old traditional party loyalties and what do you think is the interaction between those things that we're going to see in the, in the run-up to the election? What I'm hoping is that we move above politics to that place which is what is right and wrong for us? What is right for Britain? What is the best for Britain? Um, and I don't believe at this moment in time it's around the political, traditional tribal party politics. So what's the slogan then? Because, you know, one of the things that I think, you know, why the Leave campaign was so successful is because they had you know, um, take back control, which oh, spoke very good. directly to yeah, the yeah. issue. Emotionally, it was bang on target. Yeah, it was absolutely, it was a great campaign. What's your slogan? Well, well, at the moment, it's, I think uh, we have to put principles above politics. What I worry about is that you will make the same mistake that the Remain campaign, I think, made, which was they, they were too clever. Well, that's why it's got to be people in the NHS, the nurses, it's got to be across society. We just need to step back from the emotion of this. And that's what I'm asking people to do. Step back from the emotion, let the emotion subside, and bring in logic, reasoning, and choice. I think that's a big ask. Having met Aaron and Gina, it's almost like I can see two people there, like a culture war of character. For the Remain side, I see a kind of metropolitan, sophisticated person that's well-educated, uh, tolerant, seen lots of, uh, you know, has lots of friends from all different cultures and parts of the world. The Leave voters, perhaps, they're angry. You know, it's about kind of puncturing the, pre the pretensions of what they would regard as the over-educated. My work on the vases was all but done. I'd been helped by the crowdsourcing experiments in that Leavers and Remainers had both chosen the same background colour, many of the same symbols and brands, and strikingly similar images of Britain. To be honest though, that had long been the direction I'd wanted to go. In the hope of moving the Brexit conversation on a bit, I chose to highlight not the noisy differences, but the underlying similarities of both sides. But there was one thing I still had to do. If Brexit was a culture war, I would soon see how raw the wounds still were. It was time to show my vases to the leavers and remainers who featured on them. I'm angry that millions of people are uh, having their lives wrecked. Very aggressive over there. People just need to chill out. The day was fast approaching for the opening of my exhibition at the Serpentine Gallery in London. And it was time to bring together the two tribes of Brexit Britain, Leavers and Remainers, who feature on my pots. It's a kind of odd moment, this, because uh, for six months nearly now, I've been looking at photographs of these people and working on them every day. My only contact with them has been one photo sent online six months ago, and now they're going to come here. Hello! Before I brought them all together, I first showed the Remainers their vase. We've gravitated to the right part. Yeah, that's a good question. Hello. 
How does it feel to be kind of, you know, enshrined on a pot as a remainer? It's amazing. I had to wait for a transvestite potter. <laughs> <laughs> a disastrous <laughs> referendum before I'd be celebrated in art. I've sort of said my piece and I feel that that's actually worth more than my vote. Good, so I've given you that. Yeah. I feel quite proud that I'm, that's good. That I'm there. Do you think that being a Remainer has become part of your identity somehow? Yes. Although I feel, it was, I feel like an immense sort of feeling of pride about being on this vase, I haven't looked at that one yet. And, and again, it all goes quite tribal. I'm so proud <laughs> to be part of this, of this group and this vase. Mm. Hello, Grayson. <laughs> then I showed the leavers their vase. Oh, wow. Wow. Mm. That's me. That's my dog. Here is the Brexit baby. Look, there you go, look, there you are, you're in there. <laughs> Do you feel that, 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 that this is a, a big part of your identity, being a member of this Leave Voter group? Yes, yes definitely. Yeah. I, I, I wanted to join the army to, to do things for my country, and I think that this is one of the things that's just more important as it was when I went to Iraq. This has made me more confident in our country because I feel really? as if, yeah, because I feel yes. as if we can do this. Finally, I brought my leavers and remainers together. Here we are. Come in a bit closer, come in a bit closer, come in a bit closer. The healing power of art was about to be put to the test. Why did you vote to take us out of a strong, integrated situation into a situation of complete and utter chaos? This is the first time in my adult life that, through a political vote, something's actually been taken away from me ir irretrievably, and uh, it just makes me sad. I feel as part of the 48, it feels very painful because a lot of the things that I hold dear feel like they're changing and there's, it feels like there's very little I can do about it. I've been really hurt and upset by how distressed some people were over the outcome. I had never anticipated, I thought I was voting to leave an economic union. I'm angry that millions of people are having their lives wrecked just from this ridiculous vote for possibility that you might just, in 10 years' time, have an economic situation as good as it is now. I feel upset that they're angry. I don't know why. I think maybe they're scared, because anger comes from being scared, and I'm not scared. I'm looking forward to it. We now need to come together. There's no good keeping on with your remain thing. We don't care, we're coming out. Uh, I, I just feel like people just need to chill out. Very aggressive over there, just like, we're Great Britain at the end of the day. We're not gonna crumble because we've come out of the European Union. It, this is like a family argument, you know. We're gonna get over it. Matching pair, that's what they're called, you know. People that seemingly have, you know, quite opposing philosophies about the referendum, and yet the two vases, they've come out pretty much the same. Very surprised indeed. I thought there would be a, a, a very noticeable differences between the two, and I am surprised. You know, why would they be different? We're all from the same country. They're all British. I think you've given us, I think we've given me food for thought to think about how similar we are and not how different we are. Makes me think that we all have to be careful about the way in which we're kind of encouraged to divide. The pots just represent what, what is reality. I'll, if any of you want to meet me down the pub in a minute, we're, we're up for that. When you walk in, unless we know what pots they are, because we're on them, but anybody else walking in wouldn't necessarily pick them out. We are the same, we are a matching pet. We dislike no one quite as much as those that are nearly the same as us. It's done. <laughs> I've made the work. Thank you all. Thank you.
we have so much more in common than separates us. In a, in a funny way, what happened in this room is a microcosm, I think, of how we might go forward as a country. People want to be heard, and I think the referendum has given a voice to a section of society that perhaps felt left behind and unheard. Hello. And it's great to show in these vases that they're not so different. I mean, we've seen intelligent voices on both sides of the argument here today in this room. And all the swirling feelings we've seen, it's not going to go away after the election. There's, there, there is something that's been boiling maybe for decades and decades, and we need to address them.